Welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio, where we bring you conversations with the top business minds on Long Island and around the nation every week. Featuring expert consultants and small business owners who have found success but are also willing to share their top tips, failures, and give gritty, matter-of-fact advice based on their firsthand experience. Now, let's Let's get get down down to business business on Tower Tower Talk Talk Business Business Radio Radio, on on the the voice of Nassau Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hello, and welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. My name is Ray Schwetz, AVP of Community Relations at Jovia Financial Credit Union, along with Denisha Boston-Hill, CEO, Keeper of the Brand, Marketing and Digital Agency, and we're focused on being the premier resource for business and entrepreneurship. We bring you weekly business advice, tips, tools, and services that help you grow your business. Plus, we interview the top business leaders in the industry. Now, Ray, you know that it's always, uh, music is, is about life and love. Uh, it speaks the truth. It makes noise. It could be easy listening or hardcore. Um, but ultimately, that's business. It's great. <laughs> yes, and helping us with business empowerment today, it's Sharon Bacor. She is the CEO of Rock and Soul DJ Equipment and Records. So we definitely have a musical theme going on here. Sharon, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you. Well, we were very excited. Um, as we were talking before the show, huge fan of, of what you do. So tell us a little bit about how you got into that. So um, it's a family-owned business. It was started um, in the 70s. My parents moved to America and they started a a business, just anything to kind of be able to move the family over here. Um, And it sort of turned into a DJ store by default. It was one of those like electronic stores on 7th Avenue, had music in the back, records in the back. And then it came a point where records started to become a little bit less and more obsolete and people were buying CDs, but our clientele still had record players. They didn't have CD players. So my parents kept selling records and then the DJs knew it as the only place that still had records because everyone was converting to CDs and people weren't thinking about the DJs who needed vinyl and they needed two of every vinyl. So then DJs told their friends it was all word of mouth. And then we changed our electronics instead of cameras to DJ equipment, speakers, mixers, Um, and turntables and it evolved into a DJ store. And it was really because the clientele that came there were like Funkmaster Flex, Grandmaster Flash, Cool, Herc, Red Alert. They were in there and they were trying to buy music for their radio shows. Um, So it just evolved into a DJ store. And then I um, took over about 10 years ago after, well, it was, I had a few jobs after college and then my dad called me, said he needed help. I was like, okay, if I'm coming, I'm, I'm not trying to pursue a career anywhere else. This is what I'm going to be doing. So here I am. <laughs> and, and that's just cool. I know it's, sometimes it's hard to go into the family business. Thank yeah. You. It's not what I thought I would do, but, I mean, it's always been a real part of me, and it's something that you really don't want to let go of, and you don't want it to, you don't want it to shut down our clothes. You just really – it's – you care about it more than any, anything you realize. Now, what is it that you mo- like most about what you do? Huh. What do I like most about what I do? I like that the store has become a home for a lot of people and that it feels like family. I like that um, we contribute to the community and that people come and they just want, like, sometimes – we have free events and things like that. And people come for workshops, but it, it's kind of become, it really has become a home for the people who really care about music and who love the store. And, and, and I love seeing how much people like can sit and talk about music for hours. And it's just like, so it, everyone who comes in there is there because they have a passion for what they do. They love music and they love what they're doing and they want to pursue their career and do everything like it's in their blood and they just, they love what they do. It's the best part about it. So you have celebrity DJs coming in all the time. I know you also have, um, you know, DJ training and sessions and things for kids and different services. Can you share with us a little bit about that, how you drive traffic in store? 
Yeah. So I think that what makes us different than any other retailer and like, of course, I know you can buy the same thing at a guitar center or on Amazon, but um, what makes us different is that like you go into the store and then you feel an experience. You, you see the equipment, you can touch the equipment, you can try it out. You see someone up there, like upstairs in the mezzanine learning how to DJ and having a scratch lesson. And then you see someone, um, in the back of the store, listening to records and playing records and that they want to buy. And, and I, I think that like, that is what makes us unique that you feel an experience when you come into the store. It's, and also like, you're not just buying a piece of equipment. We're showing you how to use it. We have classes on it and workshops on it. And we're telling you how to download the software. It's not like you just ordered it online and there you have to figure it out on your own. You really become kind of a part of the, a part of the like culture and the community when you shop at the store. Um, and, and that's really what makes us different than buying it anywhere else. That, gotcha. that culture is really important to our business and it's important that we cultivate and we give back to them, to our customers so that they feel that and they come back in regularly. So now the experiential business that you have that, I'm sure was impacted by COVID. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that experience, like how you went through it and then, you know, what measures you took to kind of mitigate that. What happened was because we're a store that focuses on like people coming in and, and what makes us different is being able to experience a store that really impacted our business. Cause we're not, we, it's hard for us to compare, compete on a, online against a, online mega stores. Um, so we definitely felt it. And also being in New York, um, we couldn't access anything. Like we couldn't access warehouses, even when the, the business, the music business actually went up during that time because people were at home and they had time to spend making music, buying headphones, buying interfaces, microphones, setups. It was an opportunity we didn't really experience that because we were right in the heart of Midtown where it it was really hard to, um, to like fill orders and things like that. But, but that being said, music definitely was, it went up that like people buying equipment did go up. And so at least like once we were able to open, um, it, it didn't, it, we were able to like, be sustainable and at least um, make a little bit of money back once we were able to open. But I feel like we lost an opportunity, whereas other people in our industry saw a big spike. We didn't get that. We had to shut down and have like zero sales and things like that. It was, it was a rough month of April. Yeah, no, I imagine. And yeah. well, I'm, a lot of businesses, you know, like yours that are experiential now, yeah, they're learning our, well, what do I need to do to pivot? Um, yeah. You know, in the event of a, of a repeat of this, you know, hopefully not, but in the event of a repeat of this. Yeah. And then you went right from, you know, the COVID pandemic to, you know, surviving, you know, reopening and surviving looting. So can you just talk about that experience? And, um, well, yeah, we had, um, finally we were able to reopen, um, and with like, help from the PPP loans. I brought like the staff back on. Um, We're finally getting into a groove. And then, then the riots happened and we got so badly looted. Like the police didn't show up at all. And it was 10 o'clock at night that they started and they had until six o'clock in the morning, just taking stuff out the whole night it was like they parked their cars brought their friends brought their trucks and unloaded the whole store into their trucks it was unbelievable wow and um there was like footage and the hotel manager right across the street was like calling the cops all night she's like i was trying to help you i saw what was happening but nobody was coming they just hadn't they knew no one was coming so they just like the alarm's going off it doesn't matter they just like it was unreal. Um, and it was interesting like that the night of the looting, I um, was everyone was starting to talk about Gla- black lives matter. And I had that, that night I was like, you know what? I bet you I'm like, we should really make sure that people know that like our customers know that we stand behind them. And we decided that we were going to give a percentage of our 
profits to to the cause uh, and I announced it and then the next morning we got looted and that there was so much talk from our customers like they were so offended by what happened and they were like what is the point like this is not what you're supposed to do this has and of course it has nothing to do with the cause at all and um so they, our customers started a GoFundMe on our on our behalf, which was awesome. It was like they were up in arms because they're like, Rock and Soul needs us. Rock and Soul, we don't want them to close. We have to get them back up and running. And they started the GoFundMe. It was really amazing. It was like beautiful to see that happen. That's dope. So the, the yeah. The community came together for you. It really like is something special when your customers are like trying to like build you back up and they don't want to see you fall. Like they care that much about you. And I, I saw, and I saw like the funds going up and I'm like, I, I have to put this towards, I'm putting this towards the community. Like this, the funds that I get and I made a promise and I am going to stand by it. As soon as like, we're able to get back on our feet, we're going to put that towards, um, classes for, for kids. And we're going to put it towards like donations and events towards a community. Cause like the community gave it to us. And I really want to use it to support them back. It was really cool of them, and it was great to see that happen. You are listening to Tower Talk Business Radio on the voice of NASA Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ray Schwetz, along with Denisha Boston-Hill, and our guest today is Sharon Bacor, CEO of Rock and Soul DJ and Equipment Record and Records. Um, so I have to ask you about some of those programs, because uh, that, that sounds really interesting. So Tell us about some of the programs that you have uh, to teach people. Yeah, so we do um, weekly after-school programs for kids for kids of all ages. We have elementary school kids, uh, classes for middle school kids and high school kids. Um, and it's one day a week after school with one of our instructors. We keep the classes really small. And really anyone that has, if there's anybody, any any time that kids, like if there's a couple of kids that want to group and make another time during the week that it doesn't fall, like their timing doesn't work with our schedule, we're super accommodating. We also go to the schools if they're not able to um, come to us. So we can start a program. We've started programs in a couple of different elementary schools and middle schools um, and uh, boys club and girls club. Um, yeah, it's it's awesome seeing these kids like learn how to mu- make music. I think that um, there's some kids that maybe haven't found themselves in in s- sports or playing an instrument, and this is where they found that they belong. And our instructors awesome, and they work with them all year round and through the summer. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's fantastic, and, and, and yeah. we, you know. Being in store is definitely a cultural experience for you, and um, but I think that's a, a major impact that you're making, and and the fact that you want to continue to give back is just the um it says leaps and bounds about you, you as a business owner and your purpose and, and vision for moving the business forward. Yeah, thank you. And even um, like D of Run DMC, he he came into the store and he's like, whenever you want us want me to come in and like show your kids, uh, show your, do something for the school, like, let me know. So we're able to use, use those resources also, like have someone, how cool would that be to have run DMC in the middle of your like DJ class and teaching you how to MC or, um, we're, we're really grateful that, that these people, that these like celebrities and non-celebrities like feel our place is a home for them. And I have to make sure we cultivate that and keep that going. Absolutely. And so, Ray, and, and, and to our listening audience, I want to say in full transparency that uh, Sharon and I, we met each other at the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program. And um, I think our cohort of business owners, we have become so close and tight. It's truly a sisterhood. So we're really excited to be able to support her um, and rock and soul today. Um, but I want to just jump into some of the misnomers for a second, um, Sharon. I just thought about this. Um, because you hear a lot of people say, well, looting and, you know, we, the insurance company is going to cover everything. You oh. know, can we talk about your experience and, and how you're moving that forward to ensure that, you know, merchandise that's lost is covered and to keep your staff, you know, working? Yeah. Uh, 
I really do. I really hope that the insurance company will come through, but I don't know that they will. Um, I hope like right now I, I'm just like afraid that they're going to come up to us and say there's something called looting insurance or COVID-19. You're not covered or something. I, I'm, I mean, I, I really hope that we are covered, but I don't know. And I don't feel, I don't feel confident um, that we will fully be covered. Yeah. That's um, so we're going to think and send and then, positive energy and we're going to hope for the best. Yeah. And then in terms of like employees and, um, I mean, right now we're in a very precarious place with, um, with them, like keeping everybody on, on like, a, we have, thank goodness, like we have everyone who's been at our store has been at our store for years. And even like our record buyer has been there for 20 plus years. Um, our salesman has been there for 30 plus years. It's just, um, I, I would not feel comfortable. Like I, I'm going to do everything in our power to keep our staff on um, during this crazy time. And that's the power of the small business, right? Providing yeah. jobs to people. Like we're yeah. trying to, you know, small, big, small, big, and and then we get hit with this COVID. So yeah, absolutely. It's it's tough. Um, but yeah, that is like the message that I would say, support small businesses. Like if there is a store that you don't want any kind of business, a restaurant, anything that you don't want to go out of business, buy from that business. And, and it is a misconception that small businesses means that it's more expensive. It's not true at all. Almost any time you come to a small business and say, I saw this price on Amazon or this company gave me this price, a small business will try their best to accommodate you. And the thing is, that's the American dream. You know, you, uh, your business is the American dream. You know, you're, you're second yeah. generation. Your parents came. They, they formed this business. Um, we really want to support that and keep that going. Yeah, thank you. So do we. <laughs> <laughs> but plus, it's the arts. So um, now you mentioned a couple of these celebrities. Are there any other celebrities that we might know of that, uh, that have frequent the store? Oh, yeah. Um, so someone who comes in often, Mark Ronson comes in. Um, he's like a huge music aficionado and an amazing DJ and producer. DJ Premier um, comes in. Um, let's see. Who else can I think of? Many artists, I can't even think of them right now, even like um, Lindsay Lohan or Biggie Small back in the day was like a big one for us. It was exciting. Um, a cool story is um, if you've ever heard of the Wu-Tang Clan, they actually started because they went to uh, stores like us and were selling, they were just they didn't have any connections. They would pre they had a record. They wanted people to play their record. They came into our store. They came with their record. My mom was there, and she said, I don't know your record, but I'll have someone play it all day. And she started seeing people buying two records, five records, 100 records. And so she was, uh, she was like, I'll buy the whole box. And she, they sold their first box of records to my mom in the early 90s. And that's how they started their careers. <laughs> um, that's so awesome. Pretty cool, yeah. So we've talked a lot about, you know, hip hop, but I know you have other genres of music there. Um, yeah. Movie score. Share with us what else you have. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I talk about hip hop because I think that in, the, in terms of like music and DJs, a lot of them, I, I see them the most. But no, we carry all kinds of music. Um, rock music is really big on vinyl because it usually has some like beautiful like gatefolds. Also, jazz um, records are, are really pep popular on vinyl. We have movie soundtracks. Um, what just came out recently was Napoleon Dynamite and Back to the Future on vinyl, um, which is always fun to look at like some of your favorite movies um, soundtracks. Um, but really everything from blues, funk, soul, um, dance, EDM, reggae, all kinds of music. Me, Carrie. You are listening to Tower Talk Business Radio. Our guest today is Sharon Bechard, CEO of Rock and Soul DJ Equipment and Records. My name is Denisha Boston Hill, along with Ray Schwetz on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. So tell us a little bit about, um, 
what you've seen in the industry, you know, um, obviously there's ebb and flows for any business and uh, certainly so with, uh, with DJ equipment. And so what have you seen over the years? Huh, so um, it's funny how uh, I've seen records come go out of style and everything moved to CDs. And then I remember there was a point that we almost did not carry records at all. It was like a critical like point in our store where we're like, do we just stop? And then I, I like, I didn't have the heart to let go of that. Cause I'm like, that's who that became, who's how we became who we are. It's how we became famous for what we do. Um, and then it's interesting that, after that, records started going up in sales again. And people, I think that people decided that they wanted something tangible when they're buying music. And also the records are, are thicker on thick vinyl, so it sounds better. So if you're playing it, you hear a big difference than when you're playing an MP3 or, or something on Spotify. Um, so now vinyl, I think, is like the fastest growing um, media right now, which is pretty cool. What did I see in the DJ world? Definitely going the other way where people were didn't want to carry crates of records anymore. They're able to take this tiny little thing with them and DJ off of it and not carry crates of records and not ask their friends to come and bring carry turntables. <laughs> like there was always like somebody who needed to come with you so that you carry the turntables and the, and the records up the stairs. Um, so DJ equipment has gotten smaller, um, but I think that uh, what's really cool to see, I'm seeing like a new generation, like a younger generation of DJs actually go back to turntables, like teenagers, like looking to buy turntables and play on turntables because they feel like that's where you really need to start. Um, and young teenagers buying records again, which is really cool to see that shift of going up and back down and then, I don't know. Yeah, the everything, of music and well, everything comes full circle, just like the record. So it did. <laughs> uh, it's interesting. It's a very tactile uh, experience when you're playing with a record or when you're listening to a record. Um, yeah. Certainly, I can see that with your business, you have to look and kind of see. Well, what's the trend? Where is it going? And follow that through. Yeah. Um, so now, um, where do you where do you see things going? You know, forward. So, um, something that our store has, we've been around for 50 years almost. And I, I can't say that of many small independent record, uh, independent businesses in general, you, you don't see that. And I think that the reason why is because we've been able to listen to what people want and follow the trends. Um, and that's what happened with records. And that's what happened with turning into a DJ store and listening to our customers and carrying that. Like I told you how we car started carrying equipment for DJs. And now um, what we are going to start to do, at least during this pandemic, um, number one, I think that people still want an experience. I don't think that they just want to buy something online, have it delivered to their house. I think that they want an experience and, and maybe offer like a free class with each piece of equipment. And, and I think that the future really is, um, is the classes, whether it's virtual and doing virtual classes, which we're starting to do this summer, we're going to do virtual classes for kids and for adults. Um, as well as we're going to, uh, start up later in the summer, one-on-one -on -one sessions at, physically at the store. Um, just to be safe with social distancing. But I think that the future is really is is teaching is the classes and just creating an experience i think people want to feel something when they're buying something i agree entirely yeah um, what would be the one thing that you feel like wow you know looking back i can't believe we did that you know what's the one thing that you look back on and you go wow that was a major accomplishment i would say some of the events that we had um we do an annual an annual event uh, where we have DJs from all over the world. Cut like our our customers come and they'll our famous customers will come and play for the crowd for free, um, and that is like watching that and seeing all these famous people come and play and that this is like a free event and knowing that this is like they're not getting anything for it. 
I, I would say that that is really like a, a special experience in the store. But let's see. There was like a big event that we were planning on doing for our 45th year, which is this year. Um, we were going to have like a big block party and like a huge event for Record Store Day, which got canceled. We'll see. The best is yet to come, I think. I think so. And I think when I think of experiences and, and pivoting, so, you know, virtual is definitely. Um, yeah. So we'll talk some more offline. Yes. <laughs> Um, absolutely. But no, I, I know that people love, you know, they love rock and soul. They love coming into the store and experiencing you talking to your mom and, and all the staff that they, they've been seeing for years. So if you can just share one final thought or message you'd like to leave our audience with, and please let us know where to find you and, and the GoFundMe information. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, if I was to leave your viewers with some in something, I would say really shop small. Um, keep the, like, if you care about a business, keep going there. Even just buy gift cards there. Um, that's the best way you can support. And if you feel like you're, you could be getting a better price somewhere else and just go up to them and tell them, this is what I found. Please, can you match it? And, and almost always they'll do that. Um, rock and soul, rock and soul .com, Our Twitter name is DJ rock and soul. Our Facebook name is DJ rock and soul. Our Instagram is DJ rock and soul. And our GoFundMe is, um, I can send you the link, but, um, I don't even have uh, a link to have how to find it. It's on our Facebook page because somebody else started it. Um, but you can look on our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash DJ Rock and Soul. Sharon, That's thank awesome. you so much. That is, yeah, that's totally yeah. awesome. I'll leave you with DG, DB's philosophy. God is a DJ. Life is a dance floor. Love is the rhythm. And your business is the music. I love it. I stand Sharon. by it. <laughs> You're awesome. Thank you very much. I really Thank appreciate you being so on the show today. Me. Thank you for having me. It was really nice to like speak with you and thanks for supporting us and promoting us, all that good stuff. Thank you for being with us. My name is Ray Schwetz, along with Anisha Boston Hill, your co hosts and producers. This is an NCC Foundation Business Leaders Council production. Visit ncc.edu slash WHBC for more information. Available on pod as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcast and Speaker. This has been Tower Talk Business Radio on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.